Hello there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm just going to do a little review um, about my Arteza colored pencils. This is the set of 72. These are the expert levels, what they call them. Artist quality, rich, vibrant colors. They sent these to me and to, to review and to use and to, you know, let you guys know about them. Um, so it says here they're professional grade artist quality color pencils, break resistance, soft and thick leads, smooth color lay down for superior blending and shading, unsurpassable light fast and acid free quality pigments, ideal for drawing, illustrating and coloring. Along with this, they also sent to me um, a very big drawing pad. It was the Arteza Premium Drawing Pad. I would show it to you on here, but it's a little bit too big to fit in my camera. So it was 18 by 24 inches. It's a 70, 75 pound weight, and it came in 30 sheets, and it was a pack of two, so it's very big. Um, I ended up cutting them down, cutting one of the sheets down four and a quarter by um, five and a half inches, and I got a ton of sheets out of one piece, so I'll have a lot to work with there. Uh, because I'm a card maker, you know, it isn't necessarily that I like to do a lot of drawing. I mean, I like drawing, don't get me wrong, um, but I would think that this is big enough that you'd probably use it more on like an easel. Um, so I decided to cut one of the sheets down to more manageable manageable size for me. Um, but they are 75 pounds, so they're not like super thick. But I decided I would not only try it on the drawing paper that they they sent to me, I thought I would also send, uh, try it out on the Arteza Expert watercolor paper. I know you're thinking, why would you do it on watercolor paper? Um, but the reason I decided to do it on watercolor paper is there is a little bit of tooth here. And there's one smooth side and one side that's not so smooth, and I thought it might be really nice on the smooth side. Um, but that Arteza Expert watercolor paper is 11 by 14 and it is 32 sheets and it also comes in a pack of two. And then of course I also decided to do it on some Nina Classic Crest and also some Nina Desert Storm. These are very smooth papers so they might work really nicely on that but it, I thought it might be nice to have it on something with a little bit of tooth. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. I haven't had a chance to use them yet but I do have all of my swatches ready to go so I'll sit and color those later because you know me if you see me do any of these, I do lots of swatching. Um, wow, these are beautiful. And it looks like there are about three trays, so it's 72. All right. And a lot of beautiful, vibrant colors. All the colors are listed on the back. But check that out. Those are beautiful. A lot of color. Um, so let's grab one of them and just kind of see. I don't know... Uh, the only other water, or not watercolor, but the only other pencils that I typically use would be my Prismacolor pencils. And I have that set of like 70 something as well. But let's try them out, see how they look on the front of each of these. Let's just grab, let's grab a pretty purple. So they're rounded. So that's nice if you decided to put them in something other than this. Um, they do have a color, a number. So this is like the Purple Iris A807. I'm not sure what the pluses mean on there. It looks like they, well, some of them only have one plus, some have two. So I'll look into that. I'll try and figure out what that exactly means, and then I will mention that to you when we come back, because I plan to make a couple of cards, of course. That's what I do. So I'll make the cards, and then I'll come back and tell you a little bit more about what I thought of them. But let's, okay, yeah, those do look pretty nice. Keeping in mind that this paper is a little bit of an off-white, you can't, you may not be able to tell. But here they are, all the papers that I'm planning to use. So this is a very stark white. You've obviously got one that's a little bit more craft. This is a little bit more white, and then this one's a little bit more um, off-white. So this is the Arteza drawing pad, and I like how you can build up the color. That is nice, and I'm. I'll bet they blend pretty nicely as well. And not that you would blend these two colors together, but... But, you know, you kind of like watercolor, you definitely want to build up your color. 
So that's the drawing pad. I like the way that looks on it. Kind of pretty. All right, here's the watercolor paper. I just really wanted to see how it would look on there. But that looks pretty good on there. I mean, you're definitely going to be able to see your pencil line still, but, you know, you're using a pencil, so I would imagine that you would. And I do like how thick the lead is. I don't know if you can see that very well. Let that zoom in a second. It's a pretty thick lead. That's nice. Okay. So it looks about the same, but I would say the difference is, is there's obviously going to be a little bit more of a pencil line with this one. All right, and let, let's try it on the Nina Desert. Oh, wow, that's really smooth. You definitely want to use a light hand when you first start out using because uh, if these are wax based, they'll definitely build up and it'll be harder. Oh my gosh, look at that though. Wow. That blends really nicely. So it's a pretty smooth blend as far as on the paper you don't have a lot of the pencil line. If you, you know, if you work in, even in circles, you're going to have less pe pencil line. That is really smooth and it even feels super smooth. So that's pretty. Oof. Here we go. Let's try it on this one, Nina Classic Crest. Once again, but it works even smoother on the Nina Desert Storm. I like that too. Okay, so this is the look of each one of those. This one's, and it doesn't, I, I like that there isn't a lot of um, pencil lead either, so I don't have to worry about brushing that away. Um, that is nice. So this is your, just the Nina Classic Crest. Here's your Nina Desert Storm. Here is the drawing pad, and here is the watercolor paper. I kind of like the look of each one of those. So it all really depends on what you're looking for and what you're going for, but um, yeah, I'll do a little bit more. I'm going to swatch these out and then I'm also going to make a couple of cards and then I will be back to talk a little bit more about these watercolors. I'll tell you what I, what I learned. So we'll be back. All right, y'all, I'm back and I made a lot of work for myself because I decided to swatch these on all four of those cardstocks that I showed you earlier. So I did it on the Arteza Premium Drawing Pad. I did it on the Nina Desert Storm. I did it on the Arteza Expert watercolor, and I also did it on Nina Classic Crest. So you can tell there is clearly a difference, and this is why I swatch. Um, both the Arteza papers, the Premium Drawing Pad and the Expert watercolor, have a little bit of tooth to them. They've got some, some um, texture to the paper, and so by swatching these out, 
you can see how it looks when there's full strength and how it looks with a little bit of that tooth on it. And I gotta say, I honestly like both of those. I think that's nice. And then when you do it on the Nina, on the Classic Crest and the um, Solar, or the Classic Crest and the um, Desert Storm, you can see the difference there. And if I hold these up as well, and these are much smoother since they're a smooth paper, obviously. So you can see when I hold these up, the difference in how those look. And so it all comes down to a matter of personal preference. I could have gotten away with just doing it on the Classic Crest, but I personally do like to see what it looks like on the Desert Storm, because, you know, I like to color on that as well. I, because I did that, I ended up making a ton of cards because I decided to just color. So I stamped out some images. Uh, first of all, I guess, as I always do when I do my swatching, I use this Waffle Flower stamp set. This is the uh, Color Swatches stamp set. And this one I have the dies with it as well, so I can cut them out if I need to. I clearly didn't stamp <laughs> very well, but I just, just went ahead and went with it. It's okay. It's, you know, not meant to be a showroom kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, but I did some stamping, and I I used a stamp set that I'm pretty sure is not available anymore. I know it's retired, I think, through My Favorite Things, but if I can find it, like on Simon Says Stamp or something like that, I will go ahead and link to it. I used the Springtime Critters. This is probably going to be the last of my, like, springtime summery cards because, you know, y'all, it's September next week, and I am ready to do some Halloween and fall cards, so that being said... If I can find it, I'll link it down below. And I also used uh, this Blueprints die sketch, but this one I know is not available. Um, don't get mad. I just like to use what I have sometimes. All right, so let me show you what how the coloring worked by um, um, shading them out together or, you know, combining them and seeing what I could do. So this first example, these three cards were all made using the drawing paper, the um, premium drawing paper. And you can see I actually really like the sketchiness almost. You know, you see the pencil lines and I really do like it. So I made all three of these cards very similar and all my cards are the same, the same layout and everything, just different as far as how they look once they're colored. And I I really like this drawing paper. I didn't think I was going to. When it was sent to me, I thought, boy, I don't know if I'm going to use that. Um, because it is such a lightweight and the pad is so large. Like I said before, that pad, that premium drawing paper, is 18 by 24 inches. And it came in a pack of two and it had 30 sheets each. I think there might be a smaller pad that you can get. But anyway, the pad that was sent to me was 18 by 24, pack of two, 30 sheets each, and it was $32.99 on the Arteza.com website. Uh, but I like it. I like it a lot. And it was it's 75 pound paper, not typically what I go for, but I thought that was really pretty. So that's the uh, Arteza Premium Paper. So that's this one. All right, this next one... This is the Expert, Arteza Expert watercolor paper. And it's sort of the same kind of look. I really like that pencil line. And that Expert watercolor paper is an 11 by 14 pack. This is not the 100% cotton paper. This is just the regular uh, 11 by 14 pack. It's a pack of two, and each one has 32 sheets in the two pack, so it's like 64 sheets. Uh, and that one is $32.99 as well. So, love how those turned out. Let me switch these around so that they're kind of with, so you can kind of see, I guess. So that one is this one, the Arteza Premium Watercolor, or Expert Watercolor. Then on the Nina Classic Crest, that's how those look. So, so smooth. They definitely are different, as you can see. And then I also, like I said, did the um, Desert Storm. And I love that look as well. So uh, here I have 12 cards. I'm really excited about that. Uh, so as far as these colored pencils, let's pick up our mess here real quick. But as far as the colored pencils go, I found that they're very, very similar to Prismacolor. 
I will say the difference is that the lead is definitely thicker because with my Prismacolor, I don't know if it's because we've moved so many times or what the case is, but my Prismacolor pencils have a tendency to break. I did not have any breakage with these. I did not have uh, any, um, I didn't have to worry about um, pencil dust or anything like that. But then again, I really don't have to worry about that so much with my Prismacolors either. But this I noticed I really didn't have to. The price point, you really can't beat the price point. So I would absolutely recommend these, absolutely. Um, uh, the one thing I guess is that I don't think you can buy the pencil separate so let's say you use one color more than the other you know it's it's gonna be gone you just either have to buy a whole new set or so that's the downside to the pencils the Arteza pencils but otherwise these babies are an absolute win I would recommend these all day long because the price of these is twenty nine dollars roughly so twenty nine dollars for seventy two whereas you know, we all know that the other ones can be very pricey. So if you are in the market for colored pencils and you're just starting out, I would highly recommend these. These are a win. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down in the comment section down below. I will try to have everything listed that I used uh, listed in the description box down below. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe. If you haven't done so already, I try to put out at least four videos a week. And, um, and so I'm always doing something. And as always, thank you so much for stopping by.